Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life, September 2nd. We are off and running already. How are you doing, Courtney? I'm good. How are you, Derek? Better now that I see you. Oh, I love you so much. But we do want to mention <laughs> there is a COVID-19 update scheduled to happen during the hour with Mayor Sylvester Turner and the Houston Health Department. We will be streaming that live. That press conference is going to be on clicktohouston.com. So just wanted to keep you updated. But in the meantime, keep it right here, right? Because we just laugh and it is Wine Club Wednesday. Wine Wine Club Wednesday, and it's unlike so any Wine Club Wednesday we've ever done because today the wine is coming straight from the box, people. Straight from a box. You know what? Back in the day, I think boxed wine used to be sort of like taboo or not good or yeah you know. people made fun of box wine yeah like oh that's all you can afford wine in a box right. well guess Bless what people heart. those days are behind us 100%. wine in a box is cool and delicious absolutely cheers oh cheers cheers we forget don't worry i didn't take a sip that would have been bad luck right been very bad luck um so i'm very excited about this and um the best mm. way to stock up on wine to have it refrigerated constantly is just to buy a box well, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Right? I mean, why do we need to say anymore? And the box with the chicken. So we've talked about the, the chicken rosé before. Because mm -hmm. you can find it in a bottle for like $6. Oh, it's good, right? It's good. Right? It's a great wine. Yeah. And each box, in case you're wondering, it's the equivalent of four bottles so of wine. So you probably should share a little bit of it. You yeah. Know? But I think what's so great is the headline for boxed wine. It really is. I mean, the the labels are paying attention because, you know, we talked about canned wines on the show before. Yeah. Um, but boxed wines are really, I mean, they're really taking off. And we're going to get the inside scoop here on this Wine Club Wednesday with our friend, sommelier Sean Beck, because he's helping us get basically the most bang for your buck. What? I mean, essentially, you can get smashed for less. That's what Courtney's trying to say. That, no. Actually, what I was trying to say, I already said it. Having a good time doesn't cost a lot. <laughs> no, of course, we always encourage being responsible people. Have a little glass with lunch or a box for the weekend. Absolutely. Especially if you have more than one person, like the box will go around. Absolutely. I'm just saying, like, people have different... Sounds like you're speaking from experience. I'm just letting you know the box is very convenient. Because we, we have that box of red right now at home. And you open one box and it lasts for a while. What's a while? An hour? Couple in hours. In your house? <laughs> no, it lasts for a while. <laughs> Brandon loves the red wine and so it's... I'm, I'm trying to drink more red wine with him. You're a red drinker. Yeah. It's good for your heart, right? The it doctors is. say if you have Everything one glass in moderation. a day, keeps Everything the doctors away. Moderation. Well, also today we're going to do the, the trend report, and this is something that is totally corn, Courtney's corner. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you're the trendy person, you're the stylish one, and what I'm so excited about is today your stylist Marzi, um, she's doing all of these great looks that are a little more comfortable, right? Because people are spending more time at home. Yeah, and she kind of mixed in all these trends. Like, we were the first ones to tell you guys, you know, she was, about tie-dye and biker shorts and all this really great stuff. So now you're seeing it basically everywhere, but she's taking all of these looks and showing you how to battle the heat, how to still look cute in quarantine and socially distance in your driveway events that you're doing. Or if it's a Zoom call and you feel like, you know, you've still got to be on trend and look good, not sweat to death. So, like, that's everything. Everything that she has a lot of this stuff uh, comes from a local boutique called frock shop and uh, some other online deals and also one of your favorite places to shop scotch, scotch and, and soda, soda. what you're wearing yeah Marcy dropped this off from scotch and soda and you know what's funny nine times out of ten when people message me asking what I'm wearing which does not happen that often no it happens regularly right yeah. it usually is scotch and soda Great stuff, and they're a very um, sort of unisex line. You know, they cross over, so I could wear that sweater. I mean, they really don't have men's and women's. It's basically all one collection. I think that's, yeah, yeah, exactly right. They're moving toward being totally androgynous, so both men and women can wear the looks. Absolutely, and then I have this on, which is from a local designer. We're going to talk more in the trend report, and then next week you'll actually get to meet her, which is very, very cool. 
You, your mask, though. I think you should go get your oh, mask. Yeah, would you mind, Jason? I'm sorry, I just left it over there because we do have to wear our masks in the. Uh, oh, look at him. He even brought it on a piece of paper. I had Thank seen you, so you all morning, Courtney, wearing yes. your mask, and it didn't occur to me <laughs> until just a short yeah. time ago that your mask matches the dress? It does. How yeah. does that work? And actually, oh, it's this not is a dress. two pieces. Yeah, it's a blouse and shorts that oh, I'm I wearing. I thought it was a romper. No, it's two pieces, but this is Christy Lynn, and she is, uh, her Her headquarters is now here in Houston. Like I said, we're going to know more about her background coming up next week, but um, all of these masks are produced here. Her entire collection is USA made, um, but all of her masks coordinate. That is so clever. Yeah. Please really tell me cool. they have guy stuff. They do. They like do. The mask, you mean? Or like matching outfits with a mask. No. No. But maybe we'll work on that. But you could definitely have a Christy Lynn mask. Yeah, that would be cool. Right? But okay. I want a Christy Lynn romper that matches my mask I'm because that's sure a whole lot of fun. I'm we can make that happen. You just grab your box of wine and head down the road and your matching mask and it's a Life party. Life is complete. It's but we party. do have the trend report coming up a little bit later. Marzi, it's lots of fun and I think your sweater looks amazing on you. Well, thank you. Have I'm sure I'll get hate mail from someone about wearing a sweater in the middle of summer in Houston, but it's cold in our studio. Yeah. It, like it, my you heart. Know what? And cheers to, to hate mail. <laughs> cheers to hate mail. <laughs> it is What's Your Problem Wednesday, but we don't want to disappoint our viewers too much. We're not sharing any hateful messages today. Not today. Not today. What are we talking about? Well, I would like to talk about the discovery of many new gray hairs on my head. Is it a myth that stress actually makes you go gray faster? I don't think so. I think it all kind of boils down to lots of factors. I mean, as we get eight, I think it's the lack of um, hydrogen in our body as we age. That's what pulls the color from the hair. But sometimes people seem to age faster. Like, have you ever seen these historical photos of presidents yes. from when they were elected to the time they left office? Right. I guess if they dye their hair, we wouldn't see the difference. Right. But for some presidents who have left office, and it's like, oh my gosh, they well, are so the gray right. compared but I do to when they were elected. There ha stress has to be related in that, not just an age factor. Stress has to be related. I mean, all that cortisol and everything else that takes a toll on our bodies, with stress? All these scientific words you're using today. Oh, wow. Am I sounding smart today? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like to surprise you every now and then with some big words. <laughs> well, I was just, I don't know. It's interesting how during COVID people feel like I think some things are easier, like the trend report. We can wear sweats all weekend long and no one cares. You know, I find myself wearing the same pair of gym shorts and the same t-shirt like all weekend long and nobody cares, right? So that's yeah. easier. But at the same time, we're... I think that it's kind of a stressful time, right? I mean... Well, of course it's a stressful time. We're out of our, our norm, you know? We are not in whatever we all like to say our new normal, and then that kind of freaks people out because this isn't a new normal. This is just a thing that we're going to get through. But it is a new normal because it's it's how we're living our lives I mean, in this moment. I mean, in the entire year. Right. It's not exactly But I think that's stressful because you're not able to do the things that we want to do, seeing your mom, traveling, seeing my mom, seeing family, going all over. I mean, even just a date night, there's not even that. So I think that that adds, stress adds to it, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and I think we're just feeling like, okay, it's September now, it's Labor Day, and, and the realization, realization for most of us that, holy cow, this year is not at all what we thought it would right. be. And then it's already <sighs> September, which is so, so crazy. I'm just taking a lot of deep breaths, and I'm noticing I'm getting all yeah, these little... Yeah, what is this? Why are you noticing that? I don't know, little, little like silver. Today, Just now, in the makeup room, I was like, oh, I have a fuzz in my hair, and it's just yeah. a little patch of gray. They're, they're starting to sprout. They're there. Man of a certain age. Maybe it's, maybe it's more wisdom. I don't know. What are you going to be for Halloween? <laughs> When you have nothing else to add, just ask what you're going to be for Halloween. We were laughing on this morning's <laughs> call about how yesterday we're like, it's the first day of September, and all Courtney can think about is what she's going to be for Halloween. I know. You know what? I got to. Sometimes things just pop into my head. I am. Be I am realizing every day how much I'm like my mom. I mean, really. Me too. I'm. Lit I could be twins. It's crazy I'm a copy because of I her. feel. You know. Uh, it's just sort of the thought process. I don't know why I even said that yesterday. I don't know. I, th I think because I've been seeing all these Halloween decorations out. You know, they were out like mid-August or something at uh, Kroger. I was walking in and I nearly thought, have I been asleep? What is happening? It's August 1st and there's all these like pumpkins everywhere. Yeah. And candy in bulk. And let me tell you, if you don't buy it now, by the time Halloween comes around, forget it because all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff is out. <laughs> <laughs> Miss three holidays by the time. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, I don't even know what day it is anymore. But that's been the case all year. You know, I know. this morning. It's a day. 
So speaking of morning meetings, we did this company-wide Zoom call, right? Like everybody at Channel 2 was on the Zoom call this morning. And the tricky thing about having these meetings where 100 plus people yes. are on one Zoom call is we're still on the air during that time, right? So whoever's in the newsroom or out in the field chasing a story, I mean, you see people on these Zoom calls. Some people are out in the field. Some people are sitting in their cars. Some people are just, doing you know, their makeup. doing their makeup or their phones on the seat. And I, so <laughs> we got one of our bosses here had, had made this comment about a month ago about, hey, when you're on the Zoom call, you need to look at the camera. You need to pay you attention. Need, your video needs to be on. Your video needs to be on. Like none of this, you know, leave the webcam off and do a million things. Like you're in a meeting, you need to pay attention, which I totally agree with. I mean, I think it makes sense. Yeah, you're just in a because, meeting. Though, my camera isn't on per se doesn't mean I'm not paying attention right but if you're in a meeting around a, a large conference table you want people to be paying attention to what right, you're, you're not saying showing so, up in your robe and slippers yeah so I agree with this entire philosophy right so this morning I was up or I showered and I actually put on clothes it was a miracle and I was sitting in front of my computer for this zoom call and I'm seeing our bosses and everyone and I was paying attention and all these Nodding. emails kept coming in for the daily show it's like oh we got a show to get ready for, but I'm not going to look at my phone. I'm just going to pay attention. Well, about 45 minutes into the meeting, I realized my camera wasn't even on. <laughs> oh, I could have been doing all kinds of things during I that know. meeting, checking email Sleeping. and stuff. No, but, I'm but I, <laughs> yeah, I'm here in the meeting. <laughs> How many people do that, right? I know. Not here, not here, no. of course. But yeah, it was just one of those <laughs> mornings I thought, man. Yeah, I, so I was on the video and I, I scrolled through just to see what other people were doing. Um, and you're right that people were driving, so obviously lots of people at home. And But at one point, I, I mean, I had to start getting ready. Yeah. So instead of taking the meeting into my bathroom, I just kept my headphones on and turned off the video. It all worked out. It yeah. all worked out. We're just a little I discombobulated. Call, these I saw days. people were leaving. So people actually left the, the call. Because they had to go be on TV. Maybe. That's what happens. So there's this interesting uh, collection of information that our producers have put together for us. I guess what, what people have been Googling during quarantine, the most interesting things, each state has been quarantine Googling. So state by state, I guess, you know, when something's being searched online, they, they say it's trending, right? Because a lot of people are searching for it. But state by state, those things that we search for, they differ. This is really interesting because when we were talking about it today, I thought, how state by state? But I mean, let's just talk about this because this is information gathered uh, via Google Trends. There's an article um, online about this. And Utah, this, the fine state, the beehive state, yes. if you will, okay. of Utah, they are very worried about the Dr. Pepper shortage. Number one thing Googled there. First of all, I didn't realize there was a Dr. Pepper shortage. I, is this because during COVID the plant was shut down for a bit or because I'm still seeing Dr. Pepper on the shelves. I don't know. I guess there is some sort of nationwide shortage that started, you know, happening in July. This is also proof, though, that people in Utah drink caffeine. People all the time, they're like, oh, in Utah, they don't drink. Yes. Dr. Pepper has more caffeine than Pepsi or Coca-Cola. <laughs> Dr. Pepper does more oh. than Mountain Dew. I don't know about Mountain Dew, but Pepsi and Coke for sure doc Dr. Pepper does. Really? Yeah. Oh. Interesting. I did not know this. Uh, people in Utah drink caffeine. They just do. They like it. And high fructose corn syrup, I guess, too. Yeah. Okay. Great. Fabulous. I happen to like Dr. Pepper. I think I have one like once every 10 years. It's good stuff. It is good stuff. I like it out of the fountain, not the can. Oh, okay. I like okay. a good fountain drink sometimes, you know, like the... Again, <laughs> it sounded better in my head than actually saying it. Yeah. Well, yeah. people... Different... Different strokes for different folks. I know. Well, Minnesota, by the way, oh, yeah. the fine state of Minnesota. Oh, you betcha. They are doing lots of Googling about boxed wine. Are you for real? For real. You're kidding. No. I wonder why. And maybe because, maybe I'm wrong here, maybe before the weather turns or something, there's probably lots of really great camping areas there. Maybe that's kind of their vacation in COVID right now, if you're not maybe just doing a lot of camping trips. Oh. You know, so you don't have to stay in a hotel, you're with your family, you're kind of, lots of road trips are happening right now, so maybe, no? Maybe people are just really thirsty and maybe. they've gotten bored with water. Maybe. I don't know, is Minnesota not a great camping place? I love Minnesota, you betcha. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh gosh. What else do you have? Looking for West Virginia wants well to know how to quit smoking. <laughs> 
Wow. Okay, well, that's good. You know what? Some people have developed great habits during COVID. Other people have probably, you know, developed some bad habits during this time. But, you know, kicking kick the pack. Yeah. We I support that, good. right? Texas. What about in Texas? Uh, we're Googling having trouble sleeping. Which is very interesting. That is. Orlando was telling me that he hasn't slept well in a couple nights. So. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. And you had that weird dream about Slurpees last week. When I was week, drinking the slushy, and literally, I was drinking, and I made that noise. Woke me up, too. Yeah. Really weird. But nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think do also... Do you remember your dreams, by the way? Like, when you wake up, do you go, that is so weird? Typically not immediately, but I will, the way you remembered that slurping dream last week... Something will trigger it. Something will trigger it during the day, and then I will remember, oh my gosh, last night or early this morning, I had this dream. What about AJ, you? I remember a lot. Sometimes I'll wake up and think, you know, it's actually happening, and then I realize, oh, that was just a dream. What, whether or not, what is, I don't even know what to tell you, but it'll be that vivid that I'm thinking when I'm waking up, coming to, sort of, that I'm having a hard time with reality and waking up. You they know, say that, that you're, you should keep a notepad, yeah. they say, whatever that means, next to your bed, because sometimes people get these great ideas oh. from their dreams, and then they write them down. Oh. You know, I hate those dreams when you've like won the lottery or you've you won wake, like a lifetime supply of Tootsie Rolls yeah, and you're, you're like, like in piles of candy and, there it is, and, you try and then to you wake back. up and you're like, all that candy is now gone. You want to go back to bed to continue the dream? I know, I, I still know. have that dream. AJ's a great dreamer. He's a, He talks in his sleep too. Oh, I do too, for <laughs> real. Sometimes I will have laugh attacks in my sleep and I will laugh so hard that I'll wake myself up. But And Brandon's awake by then too. Well, of course. Yeah. He's like, what's so funny? I know, yeah, I know, good time. Have no idea. Well, we, we got to move on, we but do. we do want to know in the meantime <laughs> what you guys have Googled, what you've been searching online in Texas. Maybe we can help prove this dreams or not able to sleep theory. It's okay. I'm having trouble coming today. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Also coming up next, tips on how to throw a DIY movie night soiree at home without breaking the bank. I love this one. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you want to make the most out of staying in, how about throwing a little movie night at home, Courtney? I'm all for it. Entertaining expert Paul Zahn joins us now with tips to create this budget-friendly and fun idea. Paul, welcome to the show. I love your spread. Before we get to it, spill the tea. You've done events for Lisa Vanderpump and Mr. 305 Pitbull himself. I bet those were not budget-friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Those were not budget friendly, but you know, Pitbull's such a great guy. He is he's so humble. He's he's just so wonderful to be around. And then we have the reality stars. Absolutely, I love that anyway. you have, you go high low. I love that. Oh yeah, you do yeah. a little bit of everything. Exactly. And you know, I'm a big fan of Lisa's. Love her. And, uh, used to do some work with her as well at her home there. So listen, coming up with a theme. You know, Paul, we love a theme party here at Houston Life, and that's exactly yeah. what you've done today. It looks a little tropical there at your place. Yes, tip one is coming up with a fun theme, whether it's Star Wars, a sports theme. I'm going with Under the Sea because I consider myself to be like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Oh, Come you on. look exactly so, like her. You know, <laughs> so what you want to do is we're doing some shabby chic because we're all on a budget. So what I did was I just took some cans, spray painted them white, put some wrap ups with some silverware in there. I took some liquor bottles. I know you guys like some liquor. <laughs> I drank it and then I painted it some blue and white to really, you know, elevate dad's man cave. So throw dad out of the man cave and take over and come up with a theme. I love this. And so my boys love a good movie night. And with the movie night comes popcorn. And you've got a great idea for the popcorn station. Yes, why not do a DIY popcorn station? What we have here is we have two different types of Orville Redenbacher popcorn. We have the kettle, and then we have the movie theater butter right here. So you want to put them out, portion them out so you're not eating too many of them. And um, it's, Orville Redenbacher is made with the real ingredients, so we like that. And a wide variety. And it's also budget friendly because this is just, each of these is just one pack of popcorn and let me tell you i made some great popcorn oh my gosh <laughs> i wish we could taste it right now it does look delicious also on the menu cocktails right paul yes you want to come up with a fun tropical cocktail and we're going to use some tia maria coffee liqueur we're using some de serrano velvet and i have some rum and what i did was i have it in here i'm going to shake it up like so oh that sounds like a and rich cocktail mm -hmm. it is. 
and then we're gonna go like that. So it's like a spiked frappuccino. I know you guys like coffee and it is on the rocks. Love and then we're it. gonna top it <laughs> with some whipped cream like so. And another idea is if you wanna do something for the kids, we have some chocolate milk here and you just put it in a mason jar. Or if you can't be with the grandparents due to social distancing, you could either put the chocolate milk or batch up the cocktail and leave this at their door Cute. so Aww. they can enjoy it with their movie night at home. I that love that. That's such a sweet idea, a little movie take home like care package. Yeah, and a little Even porch milk. drop off. I love that. Okay, so we started with snacks. Now let's get to the main course. I gotta tell yes. you, I love a good slider and this one is, this one looks amazing. We have some great sliders right here. So what it is, is it's some ham that you can get at the deli for under $5. And then we have some of the Hawaiian rolls. And I made a rum, a rum pineapple jam. Super easy. And so you put that spread on there and it makes it super tropical, super easy. What do you think, guys? Yeah, those little Hawaiian rolls, too. It so doesn't matter good. what you put on them. Mm -mm. It tastes like magical unicorns yes. every time. Delicious. Rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> okay. Let's exactly. talk about the side salad, Paul. And this is something yes. that you did. You used some fresh fruits in this. Yes, it's a super easy side salad. What it is is it's four cups of watermelon, one cup of blueberry. We have some fresh arugula. And again, we have the tropical plating. So you're going to put it in a plate and put some queso fresco on top and just toss that salad and it's super delicious and easy. And um, did I say it's tropical? Cause it's tropical guys. Very nice. And I know that, you know, here in Houston, we're all sort of hunkering down, right? During hurricane season, you never know when you're gonna have to spend a few days at home and not go any place. Do you just have like a party supply cabinet at home or do you have any general tips for us? Uh, so we're not feeling like we need to run out and buy everything every time? I say buy a lot of alcohol if you're hunkering down. <laughs> 2020 is the year of having enough alcohol at home, you know, so that's a, a big tip. But um, I like picking up budget friendly items to redo. Say you are going outside and having a barbecue out back, just replacing your plates and everything like that. Bring some new life into your backyard or into dad's man cave. We know dad can really use some help in that man cave, right guys? Absolutely, oh, yeah. brighten it up. I also hit the dollar store. It's always fun to grab kind of those under the sea things and have that stuff around. Great ideas too. Thanks so much for joining us today. Cheers, guys. Good Cheers. to see you, Paul. And hopefully we can have you in studio someday when COVID is behind us and, you know, we can mix up some cocktails and sandwiches together. Fingers crossed. Exactly. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thanks, Paul. And yeah. for more uh, on these tips and recipes, check out our website, HoustonLife.tv. And we will be right back. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, let's hand it over to Keith, Christine, and Frank for a check of what's coming up on Channel 2 News at 4. Hey, guys. Hi, hey. guys. Great to see you on this Wednesday. Yeah, happy hump day. Two days closer to the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Always looking forward to that. Yeah, great to see you. So coming up at 4 o'clock today, you may remember the story from a few weeks ago. It is an emotional one about a single mom of five kids. She lost her job, then her car died, and that repair bill was going to be about $5,000. See how Bill Spencer and the Spencer Solves It Brigade came together to give this Houston area family a big old surprise. Yeah, first though, we want to check in with Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley. Frank, never too early to start thinking about the weekend. I'm already thinking about it. I'm already <laughs> thinking about it. Did y'all see the moon last night? I did. I Yes, I made note of it. I got this shot from Victor Gutierrez. He works out at the airport, and this is just a gorgeous shot of that nice. full moon. That Isn't is that nice. beautiful? So you can catch it again tonight. In the meantime, here's the way it's looking outside. Temperatures are on the warm side. Upper 90s, 99 in Houston right now, 94 in Galveston, 97 in Sugar Land. So it's warm. You can see the feels like numbers into triple digits, 110 in Galveston. And right along the coastal counties is actually where we have heat advisories today until 7 o'clock. Not for everybody, but if you're at the coast, it's a little stuffier than most. So watch out there. And we're not getting much in the way of rain relief. A few scattered showers. The action's been out to the west. I'm not expecting more than maybe a quick splash and dash as we go into the evening. Still watching Tropical Storm Omar in the Atlantic there in Nana is going to make a play, it looks like, for Belize and parts of uh, Mexico as it continues. So we'll talk about the old Labor Day weekend coming up at 4 o'clock. Tracking more tropics. I'll have the 4 p.m. advisories on those storms. And then next week's cold front. Did somebody say cold front? In wow. fact, I blogged oh. about that uh, in my blog today about the cold front for next week. It's a great blog. It's the best How blog you've ever read. How low can we go? Yeah, you, <laughs> you, know? you, ha you have our attention. Well, you know, we might go into the 50s. It's not out of the question. What? I know. Oh now they're now, now yeah. they're paying attention. Still. We're paying yes. attention, Frank. Thank you. All right, that's going to have us singing next week. Speaking of singing, okay, a parrot 
that can sing like our hometown girl Beyonce. It is a story you have to hear to believe. You're going to meet Chico the parrot. He lives in a wildlife park in England. Chico's rendition of Beyonce's If I Were a Boy is getting him some international fame. You are just going to have to hear it for yourself. You guys, I think we got to get Chico on Houston Life. Well, for a minute there, I thought you had my last video from karaoke. -ing. I was very confused by that headline. So I thought, gosh. That old hairstyle is very similar to <laughs> very, yes. 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 All right, y'all. We'll see you in about 30 minutes. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Coming up next, how you can get your hands on the best boxed wine on a budget. Our wine club virtual tasting is next. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah, y'all. It's Wine Club Wednesday, and we've got your grocery list and your tunes for this week. It's featuring lots of wine and lots of bass. But for today's Wine Club, we are featuring boxed wines. Listen to this for under 35 bucks. Each one holds three liters, which equates to four, yes, you heard me, mm -hmm. four single bottles, best value, no doubt. Oh, I like this music. I feel I know. like we're back in the club, even yeah. though we're just in Studio B. You know, box wine has received sort of like a bad rap for a long time, right? Yeah. But we are here to just blow your mind. Forget <laughs> everything you think you know about box wine. H-Town Restaurant Group Sommelier and Beverage Director Sean Beck sharing the benefits packed oh, inside yeah. those boxes. So bright, you oh, gotta I wear shades. I love the sunglasses, Sean. <laughs> it is great to see you. And before we jump in. that's historic <laughs> what we did with boxed wine was we talked about it by the pool. Uh, That's right. Oh, I get it. But now people can drink it shamelessly at home, Anywhere. inside. We do, for the first time ever during Wine Club Live, have Wine Club members Dawn and Karen Ooh. joining us the, in the live tasting room. There they are on hey. our screen. Also brand new grandparents welcoming a new grandbaby. It is great to see every single one of you today. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Sean, let's jump in because when we asked you to tackle this one, I thought for sure I could feel your eyes rolling. Oh, gosh, here we go, <laughs> talking about boxed wine. But this is a really big deal in the wine world. Yeah, uh, I mean, really, I, any venue that gets people to want to drink wine or more comfortable to drink wine, I am game for. <laughs> and while it's not a big deal in America because we kind of have, like, intolerant views of box wines as if they're inferior. It's very big in Australia and the Southern Hemisphere because it cuts down the waste of packaging and you get to spend more money on the wine. So it's a go. great value. Well, and there are also so many different reasons why boxed wine can make sense, right? It's yeah. more environmentally friendly. Yeah. The shipping costs, it's a lot lighter weight than a glass bottle or a case of, you know, shipping glass. And that's something that these first two wines, the Boda Box, Sean, they are all about yep. that. That is kind of their mantra as a California winery. They're one of the most lightweight packaged wines around. Uh, they focus on grapes exclusively from California. It doesn't say an area because they're getting grapes from Napa and Mendocino and Lake County, and they're blending together, but they're going for just a very clean, pure, simple, unadulterated style, very minimalist. And what you end up with is like some seriously good everyday drinking wine that again averages out to about six to seven dollars a bottle that's pretty great okay mm. let's get started with this boda box and our first one is the pinot grigio and this box is 29 bucks and walk us through this tasting and then we're going to get don and karen's uh reaction as well they're already sure. going so for it yeah. pinot grigio <laughs> is kind of like the the chicken breast of the wine world everybody likes it everybody can drink it and this one is a super bright version it's all orchard fruit lots of apple lots of Lots of peach, lots of citrus. It's just really easy to drink and engaging and pretty dry. Don and Karen, what do you think? Yeah, I, I love it. Um, just like Sean said, I mean, I taste the peach in it. It's very crisp. It's real light. And, and I was talking with Sean earlier before we went on. I have never in my life had a boxed wine. And I'm sold. This is this is really, really good. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh, yes. And Karen, I mean, so are you new to box wine as well? And what, what would you guys typically go for? What would you drink there at home? Oh, all kinds. <laughs> um, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blancs, uh, Rosés. We're into that this summer because of, uh, you know, the heat. 
But uh, no, I definitely love this box wine. I, I would go for it. And my sister-in-law, you're gonna love it. <laughs> oh, I love, I love it. So I'm not, when I, Sean, you know this about me and I think Derek yeah. as well. We are not big Chardonnay or white wine drinkers, but this Pinot Grigio, I've also had this Boda box at the Frio River. This is something yeah. that if you camp or yeah. you're out and about, it's easy, it's a crowd pleaser, it goes with everything. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a killer sangria, too, if you mm. want to. So you can make white wine sangria out of it, throw in a little citrus, add a little gin. Uh, if you're talking the river, you could add some, like, Texas vodka and some other flavorings to it. And nice. it's also really good for making white wine sauces. So you can be yeah. drinking it and using it in a lot of different ways. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, and I would never yeah. reach, like, Courtney, I would never reach for a Pinot Grigio, typically because I'm afraid of it tasting like apple juice, sort of. Yeah. So this definitely really is nice. a little sweeter, but um, not as sweet as most Pinot Grigios. Oh. Let's talk about the other Boda Box, Sean, and this is a yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon, a red wine. So Cabernet is obviously still king in California, and if you buy it on the open market, you can get some really good values, particularly from Lake County and some of the areas, and that's what they're doing here. And really the biggest expenditure with Cabernet is the packaging and the oak. And so this wine's not doing oak, so you don't get the extra heft of it. You don't get all the toastiness and vanilla and cigar box, but you do get like the really juicy, pure fruit of the Cabernet and some sneaky good weight. And because you're gonna be drinking this wine outside, you don't need the oak because your body's gonna be warmer. You're getting, this is like a yeah. low key red wine for cookouts and picnics and hanging outside. Okay, Don and Karen, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I kind of I kind of echo Sean. I mean, I, I like a good bold, heavy red wine uh, with a you know big steak dinner. But for something without the heat that we're having, just doing right. something on the grill, this is very very nice, very mild, not not real heavy uh, tannin. So I like it. Yeah, very smooth. Very smooth. Okay, I think that's that's we're all in agreement, right? I mean, is there any wine? We really don't like. Let's be honest. There's bad wines out there. I mean, you're there pouring, I'm drinking. There, but this you know, is clean and it's good. <laughs> okay, we're yeah. going to move on to the one that we started with, uh, Sean, at the beginning of the show, and this is the rosé, and this is La Vie Ferme. Am I saying that right? Ooh, mm -hmm. just butchered it, maybe. You know, your French will be better than mine anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I think the name means what is it, Jason? The old farm. The firm, we, we were guessing whether yeah. it meant like the, the rotten Robert's chicken, the but it just means the old farm, right? And this is great because it comes in a bottle for about six bucks, mm -hmm. but you can get this entire box for 32. Again, the equivalent of four bottles. Yeah. And it's, it's great because the packaging is going to preserve it. You can have this probably open for up to 30 days. This is legit French rosé wow. made from classic French grapes, Grenache, Syrah, Simso. I mean, it doesn't have a Brad Pitt's picture on it and his name is not attached to it. Uh, so it's way less expensive, but it's in that same kind of south of France general area. It's definitely not sweet or sugary at all. Not and I'm glad all. you mentioned being able to store it for 30 days. Sean, in general, what's the rule of thumb for being able to store boxed wines? And does it matter whether it's a white, a red, a rosé? Should it always be in the fridge? No, I mean, you can keep it in some place cool. I always tell people if you've got like a pantry or like a closet, you can store them in there. Uh, I, I actually popped open all these and drank them at like room temperature, AC room temperature, 70 degrees to taste them. And so they're fine at that uh, and makes it easier to transport. Because if you're yanking it back and forth from fridge to room temperature, that's where you'll start messing with the wine a lot. Okay, yeah, so keep it, yeah. keep it in one place the whole time. Don and Karen, would you serve this at a party? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, Sean brought up that he had a Pinot Grigio sangria. You could use it in the sangria. Yep. We have a recipe for a rosé sangria. Which and is this killer. Would be, this would be perfect because, like Derek just said, it's not very sweet. But the ingredients that you add to that sangria will make it sweet. Okay, love that. Okay, we're going to have to share that on our website. Let's get to the, the fourth yeah. one that we have here, and this is a Spanish red. Walk us through the tasting notes on this one, Sean. So this is Shania. It's Old Vine Monastrell from the western edge of Spain, so really thick black. I like to call this my barbecue wine, my cookout wine. Yes. It's so deep and fleshy and purple fruit. And if you have some spice or you have some barbecue sauce, this is not a wine that's going to run away with it. And because it's Spanish, it makes perfect red wine sangria as well. Beautiful. I have to to tell you out of the this one's my favorite out of the red 
I really mm -hmm. like this one producer. a lot. I love this wine a lot. I am a fan of Shania. I love her latest album. <laughs> <laughs> the wine is great, too. Okay, final thoughts. Don and Karen, what do you think, just I, in general, about the box wine idea? I love, love it. Actually, and I, I, again, I was mentioned we started a while ago. I've never in my life had a box wine, and I think Sean has just hit it out of the park with the four of these picks for us all to try today. These are just all very, very drinkable, and will absolutely uh, not hesitate to, to use and share serve these, these box wines. Absolutely. In fact, we're having hamburgers tonight on the grill. Here it is. <laughs> ah, I love it. Cheers to y'all. And Sean, thanks for tackling this headline. I love that we had you pick the four boxes that we can really serve and enjoy. And you always, again, another home run. Thank you. You're welcome. And Don and Karen, Don't be afraid thanks to, make to you. Rose ice cubes for your rose. Oh, oh, yeah. Mind blown. Another great tip Another. from Sean. Guys, thanks to all three of you. Congrats again on the grandbaby, Don and Karen. Cheers. And check out the Wine Club article on our website for more information on each of these featured wines. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Cheers, y'all. And by the way, join our Wine Club. You never know when you're going to be selected to be part of a tasting or something else that's really fun in the future. Yeah, and if your friends judge you for drinking wine out of a box, they're not your friend. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Coming up next, the Trend Report. We have six looks that focuses on looking good while being socially distant and battling 100-degree uh, weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is fair to say, Courtney, that our lifestyles have changed a bit because many of us have been spending a lot more time at home, and that means... Our fashion choices have probably changed a bit as well. Just a little bit. Yes, we are all about comfy and casual when it comes to our wardrobe, and that is the focus of this trend report. I love a good shopping trip. Here we are at Frock Shop, and let me just take one final look because, you know, my girl Marzi, she's going to ask me, did you think about this outfit before you put it on? Thank God she's here. Marzi, what do you think? And thank God I put it on her. It's obviously good. I picked it. OK, our trend report during COVID times, you still want to look good in quarantine. Marzi, how crazy is this time? I, yeah, I mean, I think as a Houstonian, it's safe to say that no matter what season it is, we are always kind of planning for air conditioned weather, so to speak. Now we're actually spending a lot of time outside, so we kind of decided to put a few looks together for you with basics, but with COVID in mind, sweaty, maybe, you know, what we're doing right now. With COVID, especially when it first happened, we're all talking about how we're always in sweatpants, right? Everybody has sweatpants, but we're used to using them, you know, lounging around the house. We've talked about uh, the tie-dye trend and the neon trend. So we kind of have it all, you know, as one here with this look. I had fun and I layered a neon sports bra from Lululemon underneath it, because let's be real, ladies, if you're gonna sweat, you'd rather sweat in a sports bra than a real bra. <laughs> I mean, right, that's what they're made for. Wear it as part of your outfit. Um, I kind of just played, you know, so I did a pop with the shoes of every color of neon. Added a tie-dye mask. Masks are definitely in fashion right now. And it's all about the jewelry. So I have these two hair and bone necklaces layered uh, by Lindsay Lee. And then how fun are those AirPods by Louis Vuitton? It's like an added piece of jewelry. You could listen to music while you're working and then be fashionable all at the same time. We have our next look that's amazing too because it's elevated but taking sort of the tie-dye jogger scenario a little bit higher. And a little fun fact here. So these pants are from Scotch and Soda. They're actually men's. So these are a lightweight jogger, which, you know, we saw the sweatpants earlier. These are actual joggers. You could put the Birkenstocks that we talked about before. But what I was telling Courtney was, you know, jewelry on purses is a big thing. If you don't want to buy the purse, you can kind of DIY one. This one is a J. Crew necklace that I turned into a strap because the purse already had straps on it. And you could kind of make your own for less than the price. And then if you ever want to wear this as a necklace, you can, two for one. So this plays on the, hey, what do I do to elevate my t-shirt and jean shorts? Well, for your t-shirt, let's add some shoulder pads like we have here. It's a really strong shoulder. 80s are back. And you know what? If you put it on and it might be too much, just walk away from the mirror, come back, look at yourself again, you'll like it. 
Uh, these shorts also, again, from Shop Off, they're tie-dye, but it's like more of a fall color, and it's linen, so very breathable and easy to wear. We added yellow shoes, and then we have this watercolor uh, tote by Christian Dior, but this one's fun because it fits wine bottles. Again, like with the sports bra, if you're gonna sweat in it, might as well be athletic. So these are, uh, again, from Lululemon, some biker shorts. We put this Escada top, it's from Saks, it's their sport line, so it kind of elevates it when you add a button-up shirt, but then again, more with the trends that we've talked about, the uh, color blocking and the tie-dye. We added these fun, you know, sneakers with it, and then this super fun mask uh, from Carla Valencia Design. And again, accessorize, accessorize with your jewelry. Pile it on, it just gives it uh, an elevated look. I love this look too, thanks so much. It's great too if you have an afternoon Zoom call and you're just like business on the top, biker shorts on the bottom. Okay, I've got my eye on this next dress because this is so cute. Yeah, so this is, okay, so these are the next two looks are going to be dresses, uh, whether you want to show legs or you don't want to show legs. So this one is so cute. It's from Misa. It's uh, from Shop Up as well, sorry. And again, this is your tie-dye, but your pastel tie-dye, which is in for fall. Layered it with some pearls and a really beautiful uh, pastel tie-dye mask from Frock Shop. And then you could pan down to her shoes. These are Vince from Saks. It's so cute. Oh, and look at the back. It's short in the front, longer in the back. I think usually all the dresses are always so even and you're worried about it being too short and this one's just perfectly made. So cute, I've got my eye on that one this for one sure. This one is great. Okay, so I am wearing a two-piece outfit from Frock Shop. That's what I love about Selena. She's got great brands. This is actually a local designer. Yeah, Christy Lynn. I love it. This is so cute. And for our last look, our sixth model, yeah. this is an if, amazing dress. If you are wanting any fantastic dresses here in Houston, perfectly curated, you have to come to Frock Shop. They have the best dresses. Uh, this dress I picked out because I thought it was such a fun transition going into fall. Super easy, breathable, wearable, and then it has this detail on the neckline, uh, like a sweater, but it's super lightweight if you feel it. It definitely doesn't have the heaviness to it. We paired it here. We just kind of went neutral tone, you know, with the pearl bag also from Frock Shop. And the shoes are Miu Miu from Saks, Raffia, really easy to kind of elevate your look. You can even put Birkenstocks on with this and go anywhere. All right, to the backyard, to the front yard. You know, and back to the again. <laughs> These are all such great looks during this crazy time that we're dealing with. And I have to say, I'm totally digging the fashion. Now, if you do get a fashion mask, Marzi, you should wear the medical grade mask underneath, correct? Yeah, yeah I think you're, you're, uh, they say your mask should be three layers, so uh, extra protection. Absolutely. Trend report always hits it out of the park. Marzi, <laughs> my gal, I mean, I feel like we need a pose. What's our quarantine pose? <laughs> Is it this one? Is it like... We're just, we're just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Always nails it, really. I mean, all of these looks are so fun. A special thanks to Houston Boutique Frock Shop. Selena, the owner, provided some of the clothing and the accessories as well, as well as that backdrop. Other pieces you can find on Shop Bop website. This is Christy Lynn, a local designer. Really fun. I also thought it was really cool that one of the models was wearing scotch and soda the men's pants just like my scotch and soda sweater i know you love it and by the way there is a uh, very very unisex sex line going on with scotch and soda so those joggers i think you should get them they'd be really cute on you they have a clothing rental program now as well just saying we'll be right back i like your tie-dye sweater thank you Christina Wells here, and I cannot wait to see Houston Life at 3 p.m. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Derek. I miss you guys. Bye. This is Juanita and Taylor from Daiquiri's To Go. Want to give a big shout out to Houston Life. Congrats to moving to 3 p.m. See you soon. Hey, y'all. I'm the Mighty Orc, and you're watching Houston Life.
Tony, Feel the Taylor, love. Mighty, or Christina. It's so funny. My mom just last week was like, that Christina Wells, how is she doing? We haven't seen her in ages. I know. It's been a minute. We definitely need to catch up with her and the Let's Mighty Orc and the Daiquiris to go. We love all these Houston Life shout outs. And thank you guys because we feel the love and the comments and the funny messages you guys sent us on Instagram and Facebook. We love it. And if we haven't gotten back, uh, just give us some time. And oh. I think we do have a comment from do Kim. Do we right now? Yeah, yes. we do from Kim. She says, thank you so much, HL. The wine cup is the best, Aldi. Uh, what does it say? It says Aldi Winking Owl 249. <gasps> Wine, not bad either. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, Kim, thanks for the tip. I know. I like her sign. Very nice. Thanks for all your comments today. And uh, thanks for being part of our wine club. If you haven't yet signed up, go for it. You got to do it. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on Houston Life, if you're getting a little stir crazy, don't worry, you are not alone. We're sharing some fun, safe ways for everyone to get out and about from drive in movie theaters oh. to picture perfect picnics. <gasps> right there at Sawyer Yards. Love it. It's, yeah, it's a Love great it. thing to do. Also, we're going to meet Houston native and Tokyo 2021 Olympia Victoria Stombach. She won't, you won't believe her Olympic journey to the sport of Taekwondo. Find out how she overcame, preserved, and earned her spot after six knee surgeries. Surgeries. Oh my gosh, looking forward to that. I and uh, I think that does it for us today here at Houston Life, Courtney. It does. Let's toss it over to the newsroom now.